Hi. Okay, you ready? All right, come in. After me. Today is the final selection of the Flying Solo X Parsons competition. We are about to set up the judges' table in the copper room. All the judges will be here any moment now and we will select the top three finalists. Use some light. I don't work without a spotlight. Bring the ring light. The winner will be showing Flying Solo Show at the New York Fashion Week on September 9th. Also, he or she will receive mentorship from fellow designers and industry leaders. I need coffee. Hello. I have. Hi. I brought him coffee. Are you ready for the judging? <laughs> yes, I am. Hi. Yeah. Need coffee? I need my coffee. And a half year sponsorship at the Flying Solo flagship store. There's a lot of asses in our room. Bitch, you stole my look. We don't use those kind of words in TV. Oops, beep. <laughs> also the winner, George. We are recording. And the one of a kind opportunity to launch a brand into the fashion industry. Maybe I'm now let's look like I'm gonna get up and kind of walk. Okay, I'm gonna go change and we can start the judging. Let's go change. Change. We have Elizabeth Tolomini, our director. Also, we have Rajuta Aguero. She's a social media editor from Cosmopolitan.com. Also, we have here Jenna Igneri, associate fashion editor of Nylon Magazine. We have Rock Chakma, uh, the dean of fashion from Parsons School of Design. Shannon <laughs> Price, director of partnership. Our first brand, which is Nano Wave. I mean, I love it because it, it feels very editorial. You know, if someone was to see this in a, in a fashion editorial, they would buy it. It almost feels like athletic wear, but like just sort yeah. of like elevated and minimal in a really cool way. Yeah. And it has clean lines, natural. Yeah. The, the fabrics feel very comfortable. So yeah. it definitely feels easy to wear. Well, and they seem quite sophisticated with their own sense of merchandising in the collection mm -hmm. and stuff. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah. mm -hmm. designers clearly thought about all the pieces and how they work together and you know thought about as a collection. It's definitely very editorial. I can see that a lot of our stylists that were from Flying Solo, I can definitely see something like this and in full. Uh, some pieces are definitely wearable. So for example, the, fr uh, the first page is definitely wearable and it will play well with, uh, with the guys crowd here. Great thing that's going on for them, they men's space, which is growing dramatically right yeah. now. Some pieces might be a little too editorial. Mm -hmm. For example, the last piece. I love the last piece. I do love it. It's my only concern is for some customers to be hard to understand how to wear that piece. So okay. it will have to explain it to people how to wear and how to style. With that said, we definitely do some customers that really love to experiment. So maybe that will be one of those pieces that mostly go for editorials. I think actually from merchandise perspective, it seems very well merchandised. The, the designer understands how to build a consistent, yeah. cohesive collection. There is a clear concept and you understand his brand. It, there is, you can tell what it's customer. Uh, and you don't really see it in new designers, they're usually they're kind of searching themselves and realizing who are their, their clients. So I think that's clear and it's nice to see in a young designer. Also, that specific piece that is your concern, I think that will be the piece that will attract the customers mm -hmm. to walk, walk to the rack and look at the collection. Yeah. They might not be, it might not be the best seller of the collection, but it's definitely will be the eye catcher and it's important to have it on the rack. And our next designer is Maya Bergman. I'm not sure how it fits into Flying Solo compared to the other brands. Yeah. Uh, it has a much more classic approach mm -hmm. of the, the way the silhouettes are created and the materials that are used. Uh, but it's, it's something different than compared to the other yeah. pieces there, but it's good for hearing everybody's feedback as well. I don't feel like it has enough variety in silhouette or I don't know. For me, it's it's not a collection. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like a collection. It feels yeah. like a lot of different pieces. I'd maybe pull some of the dresses for like a shopping story, like right. a holiday dress story, but yeah. I'm not wowed by anything. Yeah. It's not it's something not. I would pull for a photo shoot. It's would not a standout. It? I would not yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Since you're the director of our runway show, so do you think that this is something that while the press and while there are people that are attending our shows? In a runway show that shows so many brands under on one runway, we're showing over two 
250 looks in 20 minutes, you definitely want to make sure you put your best uh, looks there. And if that's what she selected to submit to us, I think she's lacking of understanding what's her power, um, powerful designs are that she would like to display to us. And, and maybe she needs to cook a little more and learn what's her exact, exactly pieces that makes people exciting about her brand. I think. Mook, Mook. yes. Yeah. Attack on Wong. Wong. Yeah. There's so much work that, that yes. went into creating the, the textile itself first yeah. and lead, have the textile lead the silhouette on the body as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, we've seen the process of making and we can definitely attest to the amount of effort it takes. I love the way they like, push the fabrics, like yes. you mentioned. Yeah. They played with denim so much. It's yeah. stunning. I love the way it's shot. It's like so like it's you can see like the city in the background but there's these studio shots as well and like it stands out even in the studio shots so much so it like speaks for itself and i feel it's definitely like if i saw it on my feed i would like want to regram it i would like want to screenshot it and save it and be like i want to wear that cute it's something that our readers would definitely be into our readers really love denim especially when it's like really yeah. pushed um, but I also like that some of the pieces are like a little not as crazy. Like yeah. this blazer that just has some of the detail towards the bottom, that's like something that people will actually buy and wear all the time. Yeah. While maybe some of these pieces are a little bit more editorial, they're still like, it's just very cohesive, the yeah. whole collection. I, I love it. To me, it looks a little messy, I have to say, actually. Um, from it, it looks like everything has those ripped aesthetic. Everything is ripped. Every, it's like having a graffiti inspired collection, but just everything is being graffiti. So there's no mix and match plays there, and it's just too much of the same things repeating again and again. As you all know, New Yorker girl, she goes day to night, and she always want to be dressed like really cool for work, but then go out after. Like the full hand beading with Swarovski crystals is clearly going to be Those are going to be more expensive, yeah. yeah. Price point, so mm -hmm. uh, there are pieces that but there might be a range. not everything, it's definitely a wide range. Mm -hmm. So that's hand knitted, wired. So it, it definitely took a lot of thought in creating it, and the time it took was very long. Uh, so. The, the work itself, the craftsmanship is impeccable, uh, but clearly it's a very... It's going to be the high, very high end. ...singular point of view around yeah. how it's presented. Uh, so it's a question of how does this evolve into a wider collection and what does it mean in a retail space? When you walk in that kind of piece, you know that it's expensive. You feel very, like, this item feel luxurious, expensive, so people are willing to pay high prices for that. I do see a good potential market for celebrity clients because they always choose something that is very unique, very statement, no one's seen it before. I am wondering if she's willing to develop something else that is more for everyday wear together with this. So is it a t-shirt version of the same thing? With a yeah. little bit of need to wear and the, the rest is plain. I love it. Um, this is definitely something that I would want to shoot. It just looks so beautifully constructed, even just in the photo yeah. without yeah. seeing it in person, I can tell. Um, and I, yeah, I love that some of the pieces are, you know, like especially the separates, um, they're statement pieces, but you can wear them. We've been famous for selling one of the kind of pieces here in the store and customers love it to, to be the only one who holding those uh, precious pieces. What is the most expensive piece you ever sold in the store? Can you share it? or? Yeah. Yeah, eight thousand. Yeah. Eight yeah. thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Digao and uh, Nanarwear stands out more compared to everything else. I feel like those two are something we just don't have in the store. Yeah. Right. So the next stage will be to invite those three designers. Because our show is coming up in three weeks, so they have to have their collection here. <laughs> okay. Now go shop something. <laughs> <laughs>